Let's build a commenting system. So we'll take our inspiration from Reddit, which obviously has a nice commenting system already, and we'll replicate this kind of functionality. So we've got a page that's dedicated to a particular post on Reddit, and then sort of a number of comments underneath. So, you know, that implies that we have a post, okay, and we have multiple comments that relate to that post. Okay, so the first question that we want to figure out is like, how do we link these two data things, right? So the post is the main object here. We might just have underneath a field called comments, which is simply a list of comments. Right, and that's just gonna point to each comment that we have in the database. That's fine, that's gonna work, uh, but there's a better way actually. So this is something that I talked about in my database design video, which I'll link to somewhere around the edges of the screen. But what we wanna keep in mind here is that we don't have to do the connection this way from the post to the comment. We can actually also do it this way. And in some situations that might be advantageous for us to do. So I'm actually just gonna brutally rip that paper off. Let's replicate this again. We've got post, we've got multiple comments. Well, comment. Okay, so underneath each one of these comments, we might have a field called post, right, which is of type post, okay, that links all the way to the post, okay? And then when we wanna retrieve all these comments, we just do a search for all of the comments where the post is equal to the particular post that we're trying to look up, okay? So why do it this way as opposed to that reverse connection that I just showed you? Well. Just keep this rule in mind, okay? When a list of things is predictably finite, okay? Like, let's say family members, if you're trying to say list all of your family members, that's a finite list. It's not gonna go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, in most cases. If, though, that list has the potential to go on forever and ever, it's a, it potentially is an infinite list, Okay, then you should think about doing the reverse connection here, having the many to one relationship as opposed to that one to many relationship. And the reason why is simply a matter of performance. Bubble will handle that search of long lists of things better when you're searching from the many to the one than the reverse. Okay, if we had this list of posts pointing you know, to comments, oh goodness, comments, that's another comment, right, and this was potentially just infinite, okay, if that list gets really, really, really long, okay, this scenario here is going to take longer to retrieve all of those comments than if we searched for all of the comments where the post is equal to a particular comment, right? This is the one to many search, okay? This works for short lists, okay? But on long lists, okay, you wanna go from the many to one relationship. So how does this look like in our database? Well, okay, as we just discussed, we're not going to do a list of comments here on the post, right? That's what this would look like. Okay, that's the one to many connection where, you know, this list could be infinite, so we don't want to do this. Remove. We're instead going to go to the one object, the comment, and create a field linking back to the related post. Okay, and that's not going to be a list because, of course, each comment is only going to be in relation to a single post. Now, I have created a page already showing a post, right? We've got a post title and the text or the body text for that post. And this whole page is actually of type post. And what I'm doing, I'm gonna pull through the parent group's post into this sort of group post that I've got here. So here's the page as it looks now. What we wanna do is create a list of comments down here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a repeating group. Okay, I might make it actually a full list and I'm just gonna show one row. And the type of comment is of course gonna be a comment. And how do we find these comments? Well, we're going to do a search for all of the comments in the database where the post is equal to the parent group's post. Okay, this parent group here, which is holding the current page's post. All right, and I'll give some text here, all right, to show the comment. So we'll pull through the current sales comments text. Okay, that's how we'll actually display it. And what I might do, I might actually just make this a little bit smaller. And up here, we'll add an input and a button to actually let us create a comment. All right, so when this is clicked, what we wanna do is create a new comment in the database, right? So we're gonna create a new thing. The thing that we're gonna create is of course gonna be of type comment. And now we populate the fields associated with this comment. So we're populating the attributes belonging to this comment, okay? So the comment is gonna have a text field. That's something that I already defined in preparation for this video. And we'll set that to be the value contained in that input, right? Whatever a user types into this input here. And of course, we also need to point it towards the parent pages post, okay? We can grab the parent groups post because this button is launching the workflow and that's sitting inside if I right click and come down to reveal an elements tree, then I can actually see the hierarchy of elements here. And I can see it's sitting inside of that group post, which is containing the current pages post. So by clicking start edit workflow and coming back here, I can see that I can actually grab the parent groups post for that button. And then we'll also just reset the input so that we can type another comment should we want. And let's test that. All right, so I'll make an example comment. And here it is, our first comment. Very nice. So that's working kind of like the Reddit one, right? Where we've got an input field up the top and then we're showing comments in the order of when they were posted. So the first comments created are actually at the top and the more recent ones are down the bottom. So I could just keep creating comments till my heart's content, right? And that's kind of giving us that same functionality. If I could be a little bit fancy as well and I can grab this plugin called relative time or the moment.js Right, now that I've installed that, what I wanna do is put this element on the page somewhere. It doesn't really matter where. I've just noticed I've got a ton of issues up the top and some of those are related to other pages here in my app, so just ignore them. Okay, so I wanna mimic this kind of functionality where we're saying how many days ago a comment was created or how long ago it was created. So on Reddit, what this is doing is telling us when this comment was created relative to the current date that we're on, okay? So when this relative time is asking for the date, that's asking in which date should these, you know, days ago texts be relative to. So that's gonna be the current date. And we'll just leave it like that for now because this, this plugin is intelligent enough to do what we want right out of the box. So. I'm gonna shorten this comment a little bit, add a text over on this side. And I actually made a mistake here. This relative time, because we want it to be relative to a particular comment, it needs to be inside of the cell. So we're gonna have one of these relative times for each cell that we have in the repeating group. And now what I wanna do is I wanna grab that relative times current value and display that in that text field. 
Okay, so all of these were posted a few seconds ago. If we check back in tomorrow, okay, these would say a day ago. All right, let's change it up a little bit. On Facebook, Instagram, we're actually not showing like every single comment in the database all at once, okay? They'll intelligently only show you like the first three comments, then you have to click to show more comments. So how do we do something like that? Let's say that we just wanna see the last three comments that were created, okay? How would we go about doing that? Well, you might think, okay, if you're a little bit familiar with how repeating groups work, that you could just do this items until, okay, and just grab up until the third comment, okay, but that's giving us the top comments, right? There's, these are the, the first comments that were created. We actually wanna get the last comments that were created. So just so I can see this a bit clearer, I'll change this to be the creation date so we can see these relative to one another. So that's a bit easier to see. So we wanna actually just show the last comments that were created, not the first comments that were created. Okay, so maybe, right, maybe in this search, what we wanna do is actually sort them by their created date. Okay, now we're seeing some older ones. If I make a new comment, right, now that's right at the top. So that's sort of there, but you know, what's a bit more intuitive is that like the first of these three is the first comment that was created, like the oldest of the three that we're choosing. And then the last comment that was created is the most recently created comment. So if I go recently created, okay, I'll grab that and I'll make this a little clearer as well by showing not just the creation date, but the comments text. Okay, so if I go like A, B, C, what we actually want is for A to be up here and for, you know, B can stay where it is, but C is then gonna be at the bottom because that's the last one that we created, okay? So how do we get this list now to work? Okay, well, at this point, right, this repeating group is evaluating correctly. So maybe we'll just add another sort onto the end. Sort of by creation date. We don't want it to be sorted by created date. We want the last post that we created to be at the bottom. And you can see that's what we have now. So that's all working pretty cool. Now, what if we wanted to have sort of like a show more button up here? And when we click it, then we see like a few more comments coming down below. Okay, now how I would do this is I would actually set this until field to be something dynamic, okay? Because if we allow this to be dynamic, that means that we can just replace it with whatever we want. We could replace it with a 10, for example, and then we would see 10 comments instead of three. What I'll do is on the page itself, I will create a custom state, which is gonna act as a vehicle to hold the number of comments that we can should show, okay? And then we can refer to it dynamically. So I'll add a new custom state, and we'll call that comments to show. Let's be as literal as we can. It's gonna be a number field, okay? We can set it to default to three, just to mimic the behavior that we already have, and now in this repeating group, instead of having this literal static value three, I'll replace this with the page, right? The page called post, and now select that state value, okay? Now, so nothing's changing down here, okay? It's all good. So what we're actually doing, just to make that clear, is we've got this list of comments, right? There's a comment, there's a comment, there's another comment, okay? And the amount that we're showing here, okay? Okay, there's more comments down here, right? But the visible range of comments in here, okay, is being defined by a dynamic value, okay? That's a dynamic value, which is actually a custom state. Okay, so whenever this changes, okay, 
whenever we change that to be, let's say five, okay, well now the range of visible comments is going to extend, okay? So we've got this connection set up. Now we just need a connection that's going to populate this field from somewhere, okay? So maybe up here, we'll have a button, all right? A button that says show more comments. So let's do that. I'll just move our input up a little bit, grab another little button here and set it to be this value and then we'll make that show more. Can make it a little bit smaller, all right? And now when this is clicked, okay, we wanna change that custom state that's telling the repeating group how many comments to show. So we'll come down to element actions, set state, and the state that we wanna select is living inside of the page called post that we're on. It's of course that comments to show, and now we can set this value to be whatever we want, right? So if we want to show more, maybe we'll set it to 10. Okay, we're showing more, right? But you know, let's say like there's more comments, right? I've got C down the bottom. What if I go D, E, F, okay? Oh, they are appearing down the bottom, but now we're cycling up, okay? Now we're losing some of those first created comments up here. Right, let me test my alphabet. E, F, G, H, right? You can see that we're now losing comments at the top of this repeating group, okay? So probably you'd wanna be able to show even more, uh, but that's not possible. So what instead we wanna do is instead of like setting this to be another static value, okay? We just wanna increase the amount of comments that we already have. So let's take the value that's already living in that custom state by referring to it. And then let's just add some value to it, right? Let's add, let's say five. So every time we click that show more button, we're gonna look and see five more comments. Okay, so I've got sort of the last three that were created. We'll show more. Okay, now I'm seeing more. Now I'm seeing even more. Okay, so that's cool. We're adding like five more each time and they're appearing up the top of the group. I can just keep cooking this into infinity and at some point nothing's gonna happen anymore. So that's a little confusing because once I've seen all of the comments in the group, I don't wanna see some kind of call to action that's asking me or you know offering to show even more comments. So we should just hide this button altogether and maybe that means we can even add another button over here that says to show less. Okay, so it's gonna give us that kind of granular control. So let's hide this show more button when we've exhausted all of the comments in the database, i.e. that repeating group is showing all of the comments that we have for a particular post. Okay, I'll set this to be invisible on page load and I'll just set the condition for when it should be visible as opposed to the inverse where I'm gonna keep it visible and use a condition to decide when to hide it, okay? It's better to be consistent, keep all of your elements acting the same way and it's nicer to have them hidden on page load and then define when to show them so that you don't have you know, the chance event of some object or element appearing on the screen for a split second before that condition triggers, which can happen sometimes, especially if your app is running a lot of logic when the page is loaded. So we've got it to be hidden on page load. Okay, so that's gonna be something like when the amount of comments that exist, okay, so I'm gonna do a search for all of the comments where the post is equal to the parent groups post. Okay, so that's exactly the same search that we're doing down here. And don't worry, you know, if you're wondering, we're doing the search twice, the same search twice, oh my God. It's fine because a bubble will actually consolidate those searches and just do it once. So coming back to our button. Okay, we're searching for all the comments. Let's grab the count of those, okay? And now let's say the rule, okay? So we wanna show this show more button whenever there are still comments that we haven't seen, i.e. like the number of comments is greater than 
the amount of comments that we're showing. So what I could do is choose this greater than and I'll grab that custom state comments to show. Okay, so whenever there are more comments than what we're storing in that comments to show value, which is in essence is saying when there's more comments than what we're showing in the repeating group, then show that button. So let's inspect this and just have a look at this condition. Okay, when the search for comments count, we've looks like we've got 19 and the current value of that comments to show is three. So let's click it once. All right, check it again. That count is 19 still and our comments to show is eight. Okay, so it's going up by five each time. I'll click it again, I'll click it again, I'll click it again, it disappears. So that's working cool. And now that we could just have an inverse rule to hide comments, right? So like, we'll just do everything that we've done for the show more, except that we'll do everything in reverse. So if I control drag this button, okay, move it over to this side and have this say show less, okay? The condition on when to show this button is gonna be kind of the inverse. Like we only wanna show this button when there are more comments in that visible list of comments in the repeating group of comments than three comments. Okay, like we'll go down, we'll choose three as like our lower limit, okay? So let's just clear this expression and we'll say when that posts comments to show is greater than three, then this element is visible. And we wanna have a workflow that is gonna take basically the same thing that we're doing here. We're, we're setting that state of comments to show, except that instead of adding five each time, we're gonna subtract five each time. Okay, so we can show more. Here's our show less button immediately. And that's taking us back down to three. So I can go all the way up and then I can come all the way back down. I can hang out in the middle, I can do whatever we want. Right, now the last thing I wanna show you is right now we've got this post page, okay, a single post where we're seeing a single list of comments related to that post. But let's say we want to create a feed, right? So there's multiple posts, we can see the comments underneath those posts, just like Facebook. You know, if you're scrolling through Facebook, then you're seeing various posts and comments and you can expand that list of comments right there in the feed. What if we wanna do something similar here? Okay, what we could do, right, if we wanted to have a page called feed, right, and a repeating group of posts, right, and I'll make this type post, the data source, well, we'll do a search for all of the posts in the database, right, let's say that I just wanna show two of them at a time, okay, even let's say one, just to keep it simple. So what I could do is just like copy all of this stuff that we've just created and put it there in the feed, right, I can copy with workflows post it here inside of this group. And we're getting a bunch of new issues because we're no long, we no longer have a post page where that custom state comments to show is living, but we can reconnect that up, right? We can put that state somewhere else, but we're really doubling up here. Like maybe we do wanna have a separate page some of the time to show a post and all the comments instead of a feed. So what's a better approach? Reusable elements, I hear you say, well done, yes. What we wanna do, if we come back to our post page, I'll grab this entire group and I'll actually turn it into a reusable element, okay? So that's gonna make it modular and then we can put that block of content, of, of, of information, wherever we want. We can put it in the feed, we can put it on a dedicated post page. So I'll call this my post reusable, okay, and there it is. And it has a bunch of issues which I'm gonna resolve now related to the fact that we don't have a, a, a state here tracking the number of comments that we should show. Like if I go in this repeating group, 
See, we've got this missing element items until. So I'm just gonna skip through resolving all of those issues. Part of what I'm doing here is making everything, putting everything rather inside of a single group, right? So we can reference it. And then I'm looking at all of the issues that I have in my issue tracker. So we don't lo no longer have a current pages thing. It's gonna be the parent group posts text. Same thing up there. Right, so I've resolved all those issues mainly by making sure that this post reusable is of type post, putting everything within a group, okay, a parent group that's holding the post that this button and those buttons and these texts can refer to, okay, and having a new custom state that's living at the reusable element level, which is kind of like the same thing as at the page level that we had before. So if I now replace this group that we had created before with a post reusable, okay, and make sure that I'm pulling through the current pages post as the data source, all right, then we're seeing the same behavior as before, only this time around, we know that we're using a reusable element. So that's a nice way to test that things are working as it should. And now we can go over onto the feed, all right, add in that post reusable, Maybe I'll make this a bit larger, make it two rows, okay? And I'll just create another entry in the database real quick. And now the last thing I have to do is make sure that I'm setting the data source of this repeating group. Okay, I just created a new entry in the database, a new post, okay? So now we're getting multiple here and if I was gonna Show more, that's just gonna push the one below further down. I can create some comments for that too, right? And once I've got more than three, that show more button is gonna appear. All right, so there you go. That's how to create a commenting system like Reddit, kind of like Facebook, kind of like Instagram as well. It's kind of like a hybrid of all of them, but you should be able to adapt it for your own use case. There's not really that much to a commenting system. You've got a post or something at the top, and then you've got a list of comments below, and you've got some snazzy user experience stuff you can do around the side. Hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if there's anything here that didn't make sense, or some other topics that you'd like me to cover in future videos. Adios.